Tracing a selection sort algorithm in Java. Checking out this main method, we have an array with uh, the values 3, 6, 5, 1, etc. stored there. And we're simply calling this static method selection sort, and we're passing the array as a parameter to that method. I'm keeping track of everything down here. Uh, so. so I quickly filled in all the values there of the uh, array named ARR. And let's uh, start tracing this double nested for loop, which makes up the algorithm of the famous selection sort algorithm. OK, the variable i, it's initialized in this outer for loop at 0. And we check to see if i is less than array.length minus 1. The length of this array is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. The array, the array is not modified and shortened anywhere in this algorithm, so I can pretty much uh, consider this to be the value 9 for the rest of this uh, exercise. And therefore we go into the outer for loop where we initialize in, uh, the variable min index to i. So min index begins at 0, and the variable min itself is equal to whatever is stored in min index position of the array. So array square brackets 0 is uh, this 3. This 3 is what is being stored into the variable min at this moment. It's the value 3 because of this uh, reference. So 3 gets recorded here on my scratch paper. And now we uh, get to the inner for loop where we declare the loop variable j and we initialize it to i plus 1. i plus 1 right now is 1, 0 plus 1. So a 1 is initialized into the variable j. And is j less than array.length? The length of this array is 10. j is less than 10 right now. So we do go through this inner for loop where we check this if statement. If ARRJ is less than min, J is currently 1, so we're asking if the value stored in position 1 of the array, the 6, is 6 less than min. Well, min is currently 3. In other words, min is assumed, the smallest number in this array at the beginning is assumed to be the 3. Until somebody proves themselves to be smaller, I've selected the 3 as the smallest in this selection sort. 6 is not less than 3. This is false, so we don't execute the body of this if statement. We drop down here to this curly brace, which loops us back up to this for loop, where because it's the second iteration, we come in from the right side and we j++. We check to see if 2 is less than array length. Yes, 2 is less than 10. So for the second time, we uh, check out this if statement. Is ARRJ less than min? Now, right now, J is 2. That means uh, we're looking here at position 2, the element in position 2 of the array, which is 5. So is 5 less than min? Is 5 less than 3? No, it's not. Hey, 3 is still the smallest number in this array so far. Again, until somebody proves that they are smaller, smaller than that 3, we keep iterating through this inner for loop until we find somebody. So this was false. So we go back up to the top of the, outer, of the inner for loop here. We come in from the right side, and we j++ to 3. Is 3 less than 10? Sure. So we go through the inner for loop. We check out this if statement. Currently, this if statement is asking if ARRJ is less than min. J is currently 3. So we are really asking if the value in position 3 of the array, in other words, 1, is 1 less than min. Min is still 3. 
Yes, one is less than three. This is true. So for the first time, we execute the code inside this if statement. Be careful here. Is j, uh, not is, uh, it's, it's a direct assignment. The value j is now from right to left here in this assignment statement. The value of j is stored in the variable min index. So the three is stored in min index, overwriting that zero. And then this line of code takes, well, min index, it's currently three. So we find the value that's in position three of min index, which is a one. We are taking this one, according to this right-hand side, and we're assigning it to the variable min. We're done with this if statement. We go back up to the top of the for loop. Let's pause and reflect on what just happened. Now, as of now, scanning from left to right through this array, we have now selected one to be the smallest element found in this array, at least so far, because we've only inspected these uh, first four elements. As a human being who has eyeballs and can look at this paperwork, we see that zero will eventually replace that one as the min. Eventually there will be a zero here. The index position of zero is a seven. So the variable min index will eventually be seven, keeping track of where that minimum element is. Eventually we're going to swap the zero will be swapped with this three eventually. Everything else in between will remain the same. Now, we're not there yet. I just looked ahead. Uh, that's how a selection sort of works. But we need to keep, uh, we need to keep it iterating here. Okay, we just paused. J needs to plus plus. So J is now up to four. Four is less than 10. We check to see if ARR4 is less than min. The value in position four is uh, nine. Is nine less than min? No, nine is not less than one right now. So we don't do this. We go back up to the top, we J plus plus. J is up to five. We check to see if t the two is less than min. Nope, two is not less than one, so we ignore that. We go back up to the top, we J plus plus. We check to see if we check to see if uh, this four is less than min. No, it's not. So we don't do this. We go back up to the top. We j plus plus. Now let's be careful here. We're at j equals seven. Seven is less than ten. So once again, we check out this if statement. J is. I just said seven. So because it's in the square brackets, that means you come down here to your array and you find the value that's in element, the element that's in position seven, so that zero plugs in for this. And we're checking to see if that zero is less than min, which is currently one. And it is, this is a true. When an if statement is true, you execute the code that's inside of it. So J overwrites the old value of min index. The seven overwrites this three. And whatever this is, overwrites min. Well, min index is currently seven. ARR square bracket seven means we take that zero again. And it's really a zero that we're putting into the variable min. We, we go back up to the top of the for loop. We J plus plus, J is up to eight. We check to see if this the number eight is less than min. Now the new min is zero. Is eight less than zero? No, it's not. So we don't execute this. We go back up to the top. J plus pluses. J is at nine. Nine is less than ten. So we check to see what value is in position nine. It's a seven. So we're checking to see if a seven 
is less than zero, min. It's not, so we don't do this. We go back up to the top, vj plus plus. We check our for loops control expression is 10, less than 10. No, it's not, so we don't even do the inner for loop again. And finally, we get to these three lines of code. Let's uh, check out this swap algorithm. Let's clean things up here a little bit. OK. From right to left, ARR min index. Min index is 7. The value that's stored in position 7 is this 0. So we're taking a 0 and we're putting it into the variable temp. I didn't even make a column on my scratch paper for temp. It uh, has such a minimal role in this algorithm, but I should have. So uh, the number 7 is stored in that variable temp. No, I'm sorry, the value 0. Um, this 0 here is stored in temp. And now we check out this line of code where we take ARRI. I is currently 0. And that value that's in position 0, which is a 3, is being assigned into this location, this uh, element. Well, this is a min index is 7 right now. So ARR7 is this spot right here. But it's being overwritten, therefore I cross it out. And that 3 overwrites it. So I just took that 3 and I put it in there, overwriting the 0. I, I might have lost the 0 forever if I had not stored the 0 temporarily in the local variable temp. So this third line of code executes, where temp, the zero, that was preserved safely, it's now assigned into the variable or the element ARRI. I is zero, so position zero is right here, and this line of code is telling me to put a zero there. Uh, crossing out that three and putting a zero there, I have now swapped the 0 and the 3 are now in the reverse locations. I don't need the variable temp anymore. And since it was a local variable being declared in this outer for loop, when we iterate around to the, uh, to the top of the for loop, it's uh, sort of uh, lost, uh, erased, until we eventually possibly get down to this section of code again. Now we're not done with the problem, not even close. We now have to I++. I was zero this whole time. I don't have room here really, but I'm going to put a one there and cross that zero out and check to see if I is less than nine, which it is. Oh boy. Now we re-execute these two lines of code. This variable sort of uh, goes away but comes back as a i, which is currently 1. The variable min is what equal to whatever is stored in ARR min index. Uh, so what's found in ARR position 1? Oh, it's a 6. So 6, oops, 6 is stored there. I'm sorry, that min index is still 1. I shouldn't have uh, crossed that out. And now we hit this uh, for loop, which resets the variable, recreates the variable j. And the variable j, which was 10, but that's uh, old news, j is now equal to i plus 1. Uh, i is, uh, is, is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So j is now 2. And we're now poised and ready to select the minimum smallest element out of this portion of the array to see if it's less than the 6. Eventually, yes, that 5 is less than 6. And then the 1 will be considered less than the 6. 
and nothing else is less than a one. The zero that used to be there has already been pulled out and, and permanently put here. So eventually we select one to be the smallest element and this one will swap with the six once we get to this uh, code segment. And then we'll loop back up to the outer for loop again in I++ and I will bump up to, to, uh, to 2 and we'll pull this 5 out as the smallest element so far and we will scan this portion of the array just to, to see if any number is less than that 5. Now at that point there will have been a 1 here and this 1 um, will, will be a 6. So as we scan this blue circled area we'll eventually find this 2 it will swap with a 5 and so on until all of these numbers just trust me unless you want to trace it out further will be the original numbers that were in this messy array but they will be sorted from lowest to highest. You'll need a lot more scratch paper. You'll need to use this space here to keep track of these variables when you continue to trace this double nested for loop that in this case is known as the selection sort algorithm.